Wind energy was a hot topic last year as developers proposed an offshore wind project known as deep water wind. Well, this year, the focus shifts here to the mainland as many local communities are dealing with the pros and cons of having turbines in their own backyards. This week, the focus and ground zero is North Kingstown. Chances are you've seen New England Tech's wind turbine just off Route 95 in Warwick, standing 150 feet tall. Or the state's first turbine at Portsmouth Abbey, just a bit larger than New England Tech's. Last year, the town of Portsmouth built one between the high school and Route 24 that is double both of those at 336 feet. The turbine proposed on Stamp Farm, adjacent to Route 2, dwarfs all of them, coming in at 427 feet, as tall as the old Industrial National Bank building in Providence. There are no other towers of this size in Rhode Island. Jeff Zuki is leading the charge against the proposal by local developer Mark D. Pasquale that had residents packing this town council meeting in mid-December and last week's meeting of the Planning Commission, which will ultimately decide if the project gets the green light. I had no idea how wind turbines worked. I thought they were windmills, uh, and now I look at these things, and they're power plants. No matter how you want to talk to talk about them, they are power producing, generating plants. That's what they are. Deep Pasquale will lease the Stamp Farm property for $5,000 a month and provide them electricity from the turbine. The rest, he will sell to National Grid. Opponents have cried foul on the process. Deep Pasquale's original proposal was unanimously rejected by the zoning board in August. The town council then took the zoning board out of the process, directing the planning commission to draft a new ordinance that the council adopted six weeks later. And that's resulted in the owner of Shartner Farms, which is directly adjacent to the proposed turbine project, suing the town. Deep Pasquale sat in on the meetings drafting the ordinance, which now sets no height restriction and carries a 260-foot setback far below what's recommended by both the state and the turbine manufacturer Vestas. At a meeting in November, we saw Planning Commission Chairman Richard Pastore ask the developer's lawyer his opinion about handling testimony from expert witnesses. The developer was in with the Planning Commission helping them craft this ordinance. Do you see that as a conflict of interest? Yes, I do. I, I mean, frankly, I do, because uh, I, I can't see how a developer would, would tailor an ordinance for a town that they're trying to have and already have an application in that would be anything but lax. Simply put, does it pass the smell test? No. The critics who say the setbacks, the height, which there's no restriction, all right. of that, and you've heard that criticism yes. that it's catered to Mr. Deepasquale. That's not the case. We, we caught up with Pastore before last week's meeting. He says the developer was only one of many with input on the new ordinance including engineers and geologists. Pastore also defended the 260-foot setback. You were quoted as saying, though, you thought the setbacks is what lawyers had developed. Were you misquoted on that? The, what, I said, that? what I said, that somebody said that Vespas, I think, had a 1,500-foot setback, which I think will be discussed today. But let's assume that that's what they were saying. I think that I've seen, I've seen industries I've seen industries uh, um, um, present setbacks and present things like that basically as a CYA attitude. So I think we have to look at that more carefully. When we looked at collapse, think the 60 is appropriate. I do think it's appropriate. Yes. De Pasquale recently took out a full-page ad in a local paper trying to counter concerns about health and safety. The developer's spokesman is David Darlington. The new ordinance is much more onerous than the old ordinance, so I'm not sure that it passed the... Uh, not, the on height back and not on height, uh, height and uh, restrictions and setbacks, because there is no height uh, restriction. Well, but Jim, you have to look at the old ordinance. It, it said 40, uh, 400 feet, but it also allowed for you to get a variance. So the 400 feet was just a marker that was there that required you to go into the town and ask for a variance. The new ordinance... You had to have people, you had to have people say, 400 feet, put it in perspective and discuss it. Here, 
there is no height restriction. It could be five, six, seven hundred feet, could it not? The new ordinance requires us to, to look at a much larger area as far as the neighborhoods go and what the impacts will be on the neighborhoods. Uh, there's a lot more jeopardy in the new ordinance for a wind turbine than there was in the old ordinance. Last month, the town council got an earful from a room full of residents on a topic that wasn't even on that night's agenda. One by one by one by one, they came to the microphone. Some had never attended a council meeting before. One resident held a map that he gave to the council. Not a single member of the planning commission or the town council lives near the turbines. And that brings up the not in my backyard argument. And whether wind turbines are a good fit for North Kingstown or any residential community. What about that not in my backyard argument? It's more of a nit argument, like a nitwit. Okay, not in my town. Because what this really comes down to uh, is it changes the characteristics of why we came to North Kingstown. The main question many are asking, what's in it for North Kingstown? The opponents want to know, aside from the argument for green energy, who benefits besides the developer and the owners of the land where he wants to put the turbine? Should the town be getting something out of this? We have been buying open land, open space in our town for quite a long time. We've been trying to maintain the rural characteristics and the characteristics of North Kingstown. So here, here we are on that side of it, and here we are promoting wind energy. The two don't jive right now. And they want to know where the town leaders fit into the equation. We didn't know about it, and we thought that you guys, the elected officials, were here to protect us. We didn't know we had to watch everything. Just this week, the town council put a moratorium on any new wind turbine projects, but that won't affect the current application here at Stamp Farm, which moves forward. Now, next week, we'll take a look at the economics of wind energy and whether the state should be getting more involved. In North Kingstown, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.